Setting up tubeless tires as a home mechanic is typically a pain and will usually require you to use a compressor, which is really loud and obnoxious, or something like this, which is a manual booster pump, uh, which will get the job done, but you'll get an upper body workout every time you want to seat a tubeless tire. In this video, we'll be taking a look at three mini compressors, which all promise to be able to seat tubeless tires just as effectively as a traditional compressor, but with minimal noise. So what we have here are three mini compressors from the company Vier, and the three models that we have are the TLC Pro, the TLC Plus, and the little baby guy here, the TLC Lite. And we're just gonna test them all out today to see how they perform. But before we do that, let's open these all up and see what you actually get in each bag. All right, so starting with this, this is the TLC Pro. This is the biggest of the three compressors that I'm testing. It comes just like this out of the box in a nice canvas carrying bag. So the first thing in the bag is this very high quality feeling inflator with a built-in gauge. Then in here, yeah, so it's like a little air blower. I've got the alligator clamps, which will just clamp directly to the terminals of your battery. And then you have these sort of standard wiring harness in case you want to hardwire this thing to your battery. Now that actually brings up a good point here. All of these compressors are actually designed to be used in a vehicle. You can either take them out and clip them to your battery and just use them in that moment, or you can actually hardwire them and sort of mount the compressor in the trunk or the hatch of your car. For our testing purposes today, however, I've got a DC power adapter so that we can just run them in the garage. It's got this sort of base with these vibration isolating dampers, which is kind of cool. There's your switch, there's your air outlet, and then your power. So this is actually the hose. I think it's actually gotta be pretty rigid because these compressors don't actually have a tank on them. So it's the hose that gets pressurized and the air that's inside of the hose is what you blast into the tire to seat the bead. Schrader valve adapter. There's a Presta chuck here, which I believe is rebuildable, which is very nice because uh, with tubeless tires, you might get it gummed up with sealant and such. So it's actually very nice to be able to open this up and clean it out. Then some inflators, some ball adapters, uh, Presta valve adapter and such in this little bag here. It also comes this little filter for the inlet which you can open up and so that's the uh, filter element you've got two extra in case these get kind of dirty screw that in actually i think i misspoke of the three uh, tlc compressors that i have this one actually does have a quarter gallon tank on board which is just going to give you that little extra capacity uh, that the other two do not have next up is the tlc plus so that's the compressor right there very, very small. Also comes with the alligator clips and the standard battery terminal uh, wires. Uh, the same inflator, same Schrader valve adapter here. And I believe this is the same length hose. These are all 30 foot braided coil hoses. Let's look at the smallest offering from the TLC line. This is called the TLC Lite. Okay, so this will be the same hose that we've seen on the other two models. A Schrader adapter, Presta adapter, inflator. So here's the air outlet here. That yeah, will just connect up to the quick release like so. I'm not sure what these are. Oh, look, at these are your inflators here. There's a, there's a ball inflator needle. So let's get these things set up and let's start testing them out. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll try three different tires. We'll try a Terravail Honcho. 29 by 2.6 tire as a representative for a mountain bike tire. We'll do a Rene Hurst Hatcher Pass, which is a 700C by 48 in an endurance casing as your sort of gravel representative. And then we'll do a Chinook Pass Ultralight Rene Hurst 700C by 28 road tire uh, for your roadies out there who are interested to see if these little tiny compressors can set up road tubeless. Hookups are real nice. They're high quality. It's just your standard quick release. Put it on and then you're good to go there. Same thing for the inflator. It'll be a quick release install here, like so. Okay, so I think the plan is to use this Hunt uh, XC Wide. It's got an inner rim width of 24 millimeters. I think this is a good rim size to try because I'm sure I can also mount the Hatcher Pass 48 millimeter tire to it as well as the um, Chinook Pass 700 by 28. Um, that'll be a little bit stretched out on this rim, but that way I'm using a consistent rim for all these tests, uh, which I think will at least eliminate that variable. One thing I wanna do first is as a baseline, test out the uh, Topeak Joe Blow booster pump. This has been my primary compressor for the last, I don't know, a couple of years. Uh, I'm just gonna time this to see how long it takes. All right, so that's at max pressure. Actually, it's about 45 seconds to pump up. And then we're gonna see if it'll actually seat the bead first try on this uh, tire here. All right, so that's seated up just fine. All right, so I'm gonna drop the bead off of this tire again. 
Okay, so now the real test is um, how long does it take for the compressor to turn on and then pressurize and be ready to inflate a tubeless tire. So that's 13.6 seconds, a lot faster than 45 seconds, and um, I didn't use any arm strength. So I pushed the bead off the rim, it's not seated, and we're just gonna see how this goes. Holy smokes. So that was pretty impressive. It was almost instantaneous. Now one thing I'm kind of curious about is how loud it actually is. So what I'll do is I'll actually measure the amount of sound coming off of uh, the compressor here. And this isn't gonna be super scientific, but I'm just using a decibel meter here. I'll measure from this workbench over here, which is about, oh, I don't know, six or seven feet away. So that was about 68 or 69 decibels. It's not silent but it's, I think it's way quieter than a traditional um, compressor. Okay, so up next will be the Rene Hurst Hatcher Pass. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is this what I've been missing this whole time without a compressor? Like a fraction of a second it was set up. Uh, you know what else I should do? I should actually time how long it takes to inflate certain tires. Once the bead is set, uh, I'll go ahead and release all the air, and I'll just time how long it takes to pump up. For a 700 by 48 millimeter tire, I'd probably run this at like 25 to 28 PSI, to be honest. Maybe 30 tops. So maybe I'll time how long it takes to get to 30 PSI. It's not going to be exact, but um, do the best we can. Done. So that was about eight and a half seconds from zero to 30 PSI. Not that bad. Up next will be the real skinny one. That's what the tire looks like on the rim. Barely see the tire. <laughs> all right, let's see if it seats first of all. Yeah, no problem seating. I'm gonna time it at 60 PSI as just kind of a benchmark. So actually that was probably more like five or six seconds by the time I actually pushed the button. That is very fast. All right, so let's uh, switch up the compressors. By the way, the shutdown process for one of these is to turn the power switch off and then depressurize the hose with any pressure. Like so. And then you can take the hoses off. All right, so let's check out the TLC Plus. First of all, look at this thing. This thing's tiny. That's crazy quiet. About 63, 64 decibels. It took like a fraction of the time to fill up too. Because remember the TLC Plus doesn't have like a tank like the Pro does. 63, 64 decibels as opposed to what was it? 69 for the Pro. Doesn't sound like a lot, but a decibel is on a log scale. So the difference between you know, 64 and 69 decibels is actually quite a lot. And I could actually hear it on the TLC Plus here. It was substantially quieter than the Pro that we were just trying out. I'm gonna drop the bead off of this, but I'm not gonna dismount the tire just yet. No, it did not seat, interesting. Fortunately with a compressor, it's as easy as just trying again. You don't have to like pump up uh, a canister for another 45 seconds every time. Ooh. Huh. Interesting. I mean, there's just not as much volume as on the Pro, obviously, because there's no external tank. I know it should be soapy water, but sometimes water does the trick. Oh. Yeah, let's do it. It's funny, I've got to, like, let it charge up. There we go. Still not quite seated. There we are. So it did have a little bit of trouble with the uh, 700 by 28 on the really wide rim. Okay, so it sat, took a few tries and some water. Let's again do a test up until 60 PSI. Ooh, it is taking a while. A little bit longer, took about 17.38 seconds. It wants to. Oh, 
No, not enough. Just our scientific method here. I'm gonna go back to the Pro and see if I can reproduce what I was doing earlier with the Pro. I'm just gonna see if it'll seat again with the TLC Pro. Uh, if not, I don't know, that'd be really weird, but we'll see. Oh, no issues there. So no issues there, huh? Let's just get this tire up to 30 and see how long that takes. So about 20 seconds, give or take. Okay, now I don't know what to expect, but we gotta at least see if the TLC Plus will seat the uh, Terravail Honcho. Okay, here we go. Almost. Go, go, go. <laughs> yes. Is that it? Oh, yeah, there we go. Woo. Yeah, interesting. So it sat the skinny road tire and it sat the fat mountain bike tire, but it wouldn't seat the medium-sized gravel tire. Okay, so starting at zero PSI. Struggling a little bit. There we are. So stopwatch says 19 seconds. Okay, you know, the one thing we didn't get was to see how long it would take to pump up the mountain bike tire with the TLC Pro. Let me just get that piece of data now. So 9.25 seconds. It's way, way faster than the TLC Plus. Let's mess around with the TLC Lite and then we'll do a summary here in just a little bit. Okay, so what I wasn't aware of is the TLC Lite version. Uh, the only way to power it is with your like 12 volt cigarette adapter from your car. So I had to bring the camera set up outside. The instructions also say you have to have the car running, which obviously makes sense. You're gonna be drawing a lot of amps from the, the battery. One thing that comes to mind is that you're just gonna be sitting here by your exhaust pipe um, as you're doing work on your tires, uh, which I didn't really think about at first. Uh, not ideal, I would say. All right, now it's kind of hard to tell because there's other ambient noises now, but I do want to get the sound rating. I'm just going to put it inside the car on the opposite side, probably about four feet away from the compressor as opposed to six or seven feet. Give us a baseline, I guess. So I'm actually kind of surprised by that. That was actually the loudest of the three. Um, I mean, obviously I'm outside, there may be some other contributing factors, but 78 decibels as opposed to, I think the Pro was like 68 or 69 decibels. All right, so the beat has dropped. Not yet. Oh, there it is. Did it. Okay, so it was actually able to seat it. You got some initial volume in the hose and that's gotta be enough to just get the seal formed on the tire. To actually push the bead onto the bead seat on the rim, you actually have to continue to fill up at a slower rate until it finally pops on. Just see how long it takes to fill up to uh, what we're doing, 20 PSI. And go. Ooh, slow. 19. All right, there we go. So that took about 28 seconds. Um, not super long, but definitely longer than the uh, Pro and the Plus took. Attempting to seat the bead on the Rene Hurst Hatcher Pass. Ah, same issue. It's the same issue as the, as the Plus. I'm just not getting that airtight seal with the initial blast. So the subsequent airflow has no chance of seating the bead. I'm gonna give it one or two more tries for good measure, but I'm not super confident here oh oh it was an almost that time that was an almost right there no. yeah that's not gonna go yeah no no that was an almost i got maybe part of one half of bead set up Yes, yes, do it. Oh, come on. Like maybe two thirds of the bead is on right now. You can feel the seal. So it created a seal, I think. There we go, see it? Ah, there we go. So it actually did seat the Chinook Pass. See how long it takes to fill this up to 60 PSI. 20, 30. 40, 50, 
and 60. All right, so there you have it, about 33-ish seconds. Let me just get all this cleaned up and then we'll go wrap up inside. Okay, so what did we learn of the three TLC models that we tested here? It's no surprise that the Pro was able to basically seat any tubeless bead and inflate the tires of facets. It's the biggest compressor, it has an external storage tank, so really it had no issues whatsoever. TLC Plus and the TLC Lite both had issues seating the 48 millimeter gravel tire. And the working hypothesis here is that the casing is the endurance casing, so it's a lot stiffer. It's a brand new tire. And neither of these compressors were able to create that initial airtight seal required so that the compressor can fill up the rest of the tire and subsequently seat the bead. As far as inflation times, no real surprises here. Um, I'll put up a chart here with all the data that we took today. But across all the compressors and across all of the sizes of tires that we tried out, we're ranging anywhere from five or six seconds up to about 30, 35 seconds for an inflation up to an appropriate pressure for that tire. Now, as far as sound level, it was just pseudo scientific we'll say I just use an app on my phone I'll put all the numbers on the screen here but you know we're ranging anywhere from mid 60 decibels up to high 70 decibels which may not sound like a lot but that is a pretty wide range of sound pressures interestingly the TLC plus was actually the most quiet compressor of all the three that we tested here and you could definitely tell in the garage it was really silent. It certainly wouldn't bother anyone in the house. Whereas the TLC Pro, a little bit louder, certainly not as loud as a traditional compressor with a big tank on it. I probably wouldn't run the TLC Pro late at night. Uh, you know, kids are sleeping upstairs. But again, during normal daytime hours, you know, you're not gonna bother any neighbors by running the TLC Pro. Relatively quiet overall. And then the big surprise, the TLC Lite was actually the loudest compressor of all three of these mini compressors here. Uh, there is a big asterisk next to that one because we were outside, because again, I had to plug that into the um, cigarette lighter adapter. There were also some ambient noises outside and the microphone was placed slightly closer to the compressor in that scenario. Now, if I had to choose one of these compressors to keep as my own, for me, I'm probably gonna go with the TLC Pro. And that's just because even though it's slightly louder than the TLC Plus, there was just no question that it was gonna seat any bead that I threw at it. It's really pretty fast to come up to pressure because it's just a quarter gallon tank that is pressurizing. So even though it's a little bit louder, it's only on for you know a few seconds at a time. And then of course, it was just able to seat every bead that I threw at it. I was confident every time that the tire was just gonna pop onto the bead first try, which for me is kind of a prerequisite if I'm gonna go the compressor route. One thing I haven't mentioned in great detail is the uh, power source. Again, these compressors that we tested today are really designed to be run off of a car battery with the engine running. And the reason that's worth noting is you can draw a lot more amperage from a car battery than you can from a, you know, just a DC power adapter like we have here. Even at the max, the circuit breaker on the house unit is only rated for 20 amps. So if you look at the instruction manuals, uh, especially for the TLC Pro, uh, and even the TLC Plus, you'll find that they may want to draw more than 20 amps at times. So that could be something of concern here. So there you have it, a comparison of Vier's three most popular bike-specific compressors. I try to make this video somewhat scientific, give you some actual real-world numbers. I recognize that it was pseudo-scientific and not perfect. I also realized I didn't go too deep into the specs of each one of these. I just thought it was gonna get a little bit dense in this video. I'll definitely put links to all these products down in the description if you want more information. And then if you have any questions about my experience using any of these three compressors, just feel free to drop them down in the comments. We'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you next time.